I travel a lot. I, uh, I just got back from Miami, and um, I wasn't actually doing comedy there. I was shooting a commercial, and I was the only girl that wasn't from Miami, and I was the only girl that didn't have eyelash extensions. <laughs> Which, if you don't know what that is, it's literally where they glue little pieces of hair into your eyelashes. It makes it fuller and longer, and it looked really pretty. So I asked one of the girls, I was like, oh, how much is that? Thinking it's like $30. She's like, it's $400. <laughs> I was like, I'll just learn to love myself. <laughs> that's, a, that's like a lot of money. Like, that's a lot of money for something no dude's never not fucked me because of. <laughs> like, uh, I'll keep wearing tight jeans and showering. It's actually never been a problem. <laughs> I, uh, I believe in love. I just think some people are trying too hard to prove that they're in love. I was walking down the street a couple of weeks ago and I saw a couple walking towards me sharing an infinity scarf. <laughs> and for a solid moment, I understood hate crimes. <laughs> what happened to just holding hands? That's unmaintainable. You can't do that. I had so many questions. Like, whose idea was it? I have a theory. I think it was neither of their ideas. I, uh, I think it was their therapist. I do, I think they walked into the session and they're like, hey man, it's not working out. And he's like, well, have you tried sharing an infinity scarf? It works for me and my wife who's sitting right next to me. <laughs> Worked for us, we're writing a book. It's gonna be great, it's called Love is Real. <laughs> I, uh, I'm having a lot of health issues. I've been, uh, I've been having them for about 10 years now, but they've gotten significantly worse in the last two. And my little sister's having health problems, and my little brother's 21, and he's having health problems. And that's crazy to me, because we all eat relatively healthy. And it started to make me realize, like, it has to be genetic. And I used to be proud that I was 100% Italian, but now I'm starting to think that might be the problem. Because <laughs> my dad's a Southern Italian that grew up in Pennsylvania, and my mom's a Southern Italian that grew up in New Jersey, and they're not cousins. <laughs> but they might as well be. Because my body is falling the fuck apart. <laughs> like, if I was a dog, I would have been put to sleep years ago. <laughs> Because at some point, you're just not cute enough or soft enough for people to continue to invest in you. I'm a financial burden to my family. And that's what pisses me off about people that think purity of race is a good idea. Because I think we've all learned now, because of science and celebrities, when you mix the races, you make a stronger immune system and significantly prettier people. And I just think if my dad was Guatemalan, I'd be 20% hotter and a lot healthier. And I tell him every day. I do think I know what I'm talking about. I've read like 10 books about what's going on in my body and I want to help people. So like whenever I see like two really white people together, I go up to them and I go, I think you should fuck somebody else. <laughs> For the kids. <laughs> my health problems have gotten so bad that I was told that I should go off the birth control pill. I was on it for about 12 years and I've been off it now for about three. But of course, as soon as you go off something like that, it fucks with you and you have more problems. So my newest issue is I have hormonal acne. So that's when you break out just around your mouth. I call it my goatee of acne. Uh, I also call it my new form of birth control. It's been great. But it's been three years of me trying everything to balance out my hormones so I don't break out and nothing has worked. I've read every book, I've read every blog, I've tried everything anybody's ever told me. It never works every month I break out and it's driving me nuts. But I think I have a little bit of hope because uh, I've actually, I'm at the age where all my friends are having kids and I kind of noticed um, in the last couple of like meetups with my friends with kids, we've had similar conversations. So they would be like, oh, I also had hormonal acne and then I had a baby and naturally balanced out my hormones and now I don't break out. So I started asking questions like, how long into the pregnancy did you notice the act, like before the third trimester? Maybe this isn't the room for this joke. <laughs> we take risks here, guys. I'll just burn this place to the ground. History in this set, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. <laughs> I don't know, I'm, um, I'm a mess, I, uh, I know that. I just turned 30 this year, and I, uh, yeah, sure. I am not handling it well, <laughs> not at all. I just don't feel like anybody accurately prepared me for like how my body and my hormones were gonna change. Like I've never been so horny in my life. 
Nobody prepared me for that. I feel like they sit you down in high school and they explain what sex is, but nobody sat me down as an adult and told me one day I'd be on the train, look around, and want to bang anybody that looks like they brush their teeth. <laughs> Yo, that's a scary feeling if you've never felt it before. <laughs> It's, it's strange because I, nobody talks about like the much slower, very different sexual progression for women. Because it is different. Like we all start experimenting with sex around the same time. Like I had sex for the first time at 17 and I didn't really get the hype and I went and studied. That's why more women go to college. It's just not fun, I wasn't into it. But it changes, like somewhere in my early 20s, a dude actually liked me, he tried to make me come. Somewhere in my late 20s, I learned how to multiple orgasm, and now I'm 30 and I have skills. It's like, fuck my dreams. <laughs> like all I'm saying is like, I'm not gonna rape anybody, but I have texted all my exes. <laughs> Cause I want to do over. I cry less now. <laughs> that, that's the one that made it weird, all right. <laughs> this next joke, it's just gonna get weird. Uh, no, this is not being taped, right? Um, <laughs> I, uh, I have been thinking about sex a lot. It's been the weirdest six months of my life. Cause I think about sex all the time now, but I have a comedian's brain and I'm analyzing it and I'm starting to realize like, I don't think I'm thinking about it correctly. <laughs> Because the way they portray women thinking about sex, it's always a visual. It's always like a hot guy, shirtless, running down the street, and that's what gets a woman going. But it's never been visual for me. It's always been like a feeling or like a thought. Like, uh, I'll give you an example. Like, I'm a runner. I do a lot of long distance running. So, like, the other day, I was, like, doing a long run. I was about a mile away from home. And my first thought was, I don't want to go home and shower. I just want to lay on my floor and give up on life. It's actually how I finish all my runs. Uh, <laughs> then my next thought was like, would anybody fuck me right now? Like as gross as I am and as lack of an effort as I'm gonna give to the process, like would anybody be into this right now? And then I think like, why am I doing my hair and my makeup and trying to be the best version of myself because that's unmaintainable? What about like six days without showering? Somebody's gotta be into that. Like why is it in sickness and in health? Why can't it be in laziness and procrastination? <laughs> And then I'm laying on my floor thinking about not showering for about two weeks and uh, the guy that's into that, and I get, I get pretty excited. <laughs> I lost everybody to the left. <laughs> just everybody on that side. It's just like, nope, don't shake her hand. Um, I don't know, I'm, uh, I'm trying to date, uh, I guess. Uh, I don't know anymore, I think dating's hard, I really do. I think it's hard for everybody. I just think it's much harder for comedians Cause like, I'm really funny. <laughs> like this shit is scripted, but you should see me on the fly. It's magic. <laughs> and sometimes when I'm on a date, I want to tell a dude that like, hey, if we're having a bad conversation, it's you, buddy. <laughs> it ain't me, I get paid for this shit. <laughs> to me, dating feels like playing tennis with a child. I'm tired of chasing balls and telling you you're great. <laughs> I want a back and forth. I play with Serena Williams. You better step your game up. I was on a date recently and afterwards the dude was like, I would love to see you again. I had a really great time. And I was like, of course you did. I was amazing. I was, I was funny. I asked him interesting questions about his life. I got to the heart of him as a person, but I did that. He interviewed me about comedy for an hour. It wasn't a date, it was a podcast. I don't want a fan, I want a boyfriend. Unsubscribe. I'm, uh, I'm making out with a dude that invented a cat toy. Yeah, that's real. Sit with that for a second. <laughs> I feel like you have to know a little bit about me to understand the significance of that statement. Both my parents are veterinarians, my mom's a cat specialist, and I grew up next to an all-cat clinic, so I'm gonna repeat. I am making out with a man that invented a cat toy. <laughs> you wanna know what that feels like? It feels like dreams come true, everybody. It feels like seven-year-old me predicted the future. <laughs> That's crazy, that's so crazy to me. I started to realize like I'm not even dating like present cat toy guy, I'm like dating like like six years in the future of like what our life could be. Cause I'm already like married, living on a farm paid for by his cat toy money. <laughs> Just surrounded by like 30 cats all named after Kardashians. <laughs> you know, like the cat lady dream. I don't think it's gonna work out though. Um, I'm not into it. Uh, I know I have to end it. I just don't date enough. I don't know what the protocol is. I was thinking about just sending him a text message that just said, I can't keep chasing a laser that's just not there. <laughs> I'm going with that. 
I'm uh, I'm a pretty big spaz. I uh, I've been a spaz my whole life, but I uh, I think I hide it pretty well. Like I would say, only my immediate family and like my friends of like 15 years really know how batshit crazy I am. The problem is, is when you are legit crazy, you can't always hide it. And I would say I have a meltdown in front of an acquaintance like once a year. Like, have you ever had a meltdown so bad you have to become friends with the person that saw it? <laughs> I have two very distinct friend groups. I have, like, the friends I know and love and I would do anything for, and then I have, like, the friends that I always help move because they know too much. <laughs> I, um, I come from a large, large family. I am the uh, second oldest of five kids. I'm uh, close with all my siblings. I'm close to my parents. Uh, I don't think my mom wanted any of us, uh, cause she told us, she told us <laughs> flat out. But it's crazy, I have a great relationship with my mom. It just took a while, because I think as you get older, you start to understand that just because people don't have the skills or tools to communicate, doesn't mean that they don't care. So a uh, good example, we all pitched in, we bought my mom an iPhone uh, pretty recently, and it's amazing. My mom is obsessed with emojis. <laughs> obsessed. A day does not go by that my mom doesn't send me like a heart emoji or like a smiley face with heart eyes. Like I didn't even know my mom loved me until we got her an iPhone. <laughs> I have no idea. It's been such a game changer that I really wish like me and my siblings could have grown up with a mom that owned an iPhone because it would have been such a different upbringing. Because instead of her freaking out and like throwing plates and dishes and like shoes at her head, she could have like sent a text message. Like a bomb emoji and a gun emoji and a knife emoji and we would all stayed in our rooms. And it would have spared us a lot of therapy. <laughs> I don't think that's true. I know my mom really well. Uh, she totally would have thrown the iPhone at our heads. Uh, but we would have known how to handle it. We would have sat her down, dusted off the glass, handed it back, and been like, Mom, use your emojis. <laughs> I, um, I'll leave eventually. I, um, <laughs> my therapist went on maternity leave, so I actually have a whole mental illness chunk, and then afterwards I have to be like, I'm sorry, this is now your problem. <laughs> And then I hand everybody a copay. It's really nice. It's really, it's like the opposite of charging a cover, cha cover charge. Is that a thing? That's a thing. Okay. I'm gonna leave soon. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I, um, I like I said, I'm I'm having all these health issues, and it's um, it's been kind of nuts. I'm on my fifth specialist, and I'm now on like a super strict diet, and I can't drink alcohol on this diet, and nobody's fucking me, so I have a lot of free time and like nothing I'm allowed to do in it. So my new thing is I've been watching a lot of romantic comedies. Uh, I actually watched three in a row last night and now I'm not sure why they're called romantic comedies. I think they should be called romance porn. <laughs> Cause it's the same thing. Why do we bully dudes for watching too much porn? Cause it's no different. Cause when a guy watches too much porn it creates an idealistic idea of what they want like women to do in the bedroom. But when women watch too many romantic comedies, it creates an idealistic idea of what they want men to do in a relationship. And I think we should come together. <laughs> I do, I think we should compromise. Like, hey, I'll let you come on my face if you stop my plane from taking off just to tell me you miss me. <laughs> Thanks guys, I'm Liz Mealy, thank you so much. Liz Mealy, everybody.